hit by ice and rain. It's a small device, small things pick up ice quicker than big things, so the pitot tube is prime candidate for picking up icing. For this reason, the pitot tubes have a powerful heating element, supposedly able to handle any conditions an aircraft could encounter at altitude. But as the accident investigation reports concede, scientific knowledge of the conditions Flight 447 flew into, a storm at 35,000 feet, are worryingly incomplete. Did Flight 447's pitot tubes meet a situation they were not designed to handle? Back at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado, meteorologist John Williams aims to calculate the actual weather conditions in Flight 447's path. But one of the, the things that uh, we're interested in is what were the conditions at 35,000 feet? Uh, what kind of um, ice or liquid was there at that altitude? Williams can work out the precise conditions at Flight 447's altitude. One of the first things we want to do is try to figure out what the temperatures were at that level. He creates a cross-section showing the temperature at different altitudes. What it shows starting at the surface and going up to the top of the atmosphere, they were flying at this level here, and you can see that the temperatures were about 40 below Celsius at the time and location of the accident. Minus 40 Celsius may seem extremely cold, but in fact, it's much warmer than is usual at 35,000 feet. And, Williams thinks, just right for a highly unusual phenomenon. What we found out from this analysis is that it's possible that there was supercooled liquid water at the altitude of the aircraft. Supercooled water is a strange quirk of physics. In 32 years' experience, Tony Cable has never seen it up close. The water in these bottles is well below zero, the normal freezing point. But it's still liquid. Ice crystals can only grow around tiny particles, and this water is extremely pure. But if Cable inserts a metal tube... Hey! Instant solid ice. That is incredible. the fact that air is really clean over the oceans suggests that if there's supercooled liquid water in the atmosphere and an aircraft flies through that, those little droplets are ready to freeze as soon as they hit a surface. When hit by supercooled water, a pitot tube could freeze in seconds. It is possible the aircraft encountered conditions which are more severe than those to which it had been designed, the pitot heads, may not have been sufficient to cope with these severe conditions. The official reports agree that more research is required into supercooled water at a high altitude. And Tony Cable discovers that Flight 447 wasn't an isolated pitot tube incident. A catalog of failure has since come to light. From 2003, 36 frozen pitot tube incidents involving A330s or the similar A340s. And in 2009, they were coming thick and fast. It was in the order of one a week for getting on for two months in the period leading up to the 1st of June. All the failed pitot tubes met existing safety standards. But in late 2007, Airbus recommended a refit of all A330s with uprated pitots. Air France was in the process of upgrading its entire fleet when Flight 447 ran into the Atlantic storm. 
still with old model Pitos. Our independent team believes they may have encountered supercooled water, causing the pitot tubes to freeze. With no airspeed data, Flight 447's automatic systems collapse. One by one by one. In total darkness and heavy turbulence, the crew are forced to retake manual control. Pilots are the last line of defense. So when things go very wrong, the last line of defense is the aviator. After more than three hours on autopilot, the pilots are suddenly faced by information overload. That crew faced an almost unheard of series of failures, one right behind the other. And for them to sort through it would have been very difficult that night. Why is the airplane doing what it's doing? What are all these failures? Why are they all coming at one time? Bombarded by faults, the pilot must cope with the most serious problem of all. He must maintain speed, or they will go out of control. The acceleration of forces caused by the turbulence means that we might stall the aircraft. If Flight 447 slows down by just a few knots, it could go into the catastrophic condition known as a stall. Back in the wind tunnel, Tony Cable demonstrates how an aircraft's wing can cease to function. OK, Cliff, you ready to go? An aircraft is kept aloft by smooth, streamlined airflow over the wings. If the aircraft slows down, the angle of the wing must be increased to maintain lift. But too slow, and there's a critical angle where the airflow breaks up. If you disrupt that flow, the wing cannot produce lift. And that's really all a stall is, is it's a disruption of the airflow across the top of the wing. If it slows down, there's a tendency for the nose to come up, and at a fairly shallow angle, the wings will stall, the airflow breaks down, there's a loss of lift, and the aircraft begins to descend. Stalled wings would mean a dramatic, uncontrolled descent. At 35,000 feet, in heavy turbulence, even a very small reduction in speed would increase the risk. Our speed range is quite limited. Typically, it could be uh, 10 knots either side of the cruise speed. The pilots must somehow avoid slowing down by even 10 knots. The only trouble is, with their pitot probes frozen, they have no way of knowing how fast they're going. The ability for the crew to recognize if they were at the proper speed is going to be a much more complex problem now. A complex problem, but can it be solved? In the simulator, Martin Alder plans to recreate the known technical failures on Flight 447. Two experienced pilot instructors will attempt to maintain speed and avoid the stall using standard operating procedure. Like Flight 447, they are cruising normally at 35,000 feet at night over the ocean. Okay, there's uh, no changes. Okay, uh, Alder triggers the storm. I like the look of that one, so now activating. Thunderclouds loom ahead on the pilot's radar. Probably in line of thunderstorms. The captain plans a detour and prepares for turbulence. So, turbulence airspeed, then I'm selecting decimal 76. As was likely on 